It's been almost three weeks since Kevin McCarthy was ousted as Speaker of the House, and there is no sign of the end of the chaos. We're joined now by House Foreign Affairs Committee Chair, Republican Congressman Michael McCall. We'll get to the House in a moment, but first, you heard what uh, Secretary Austin had to say. How concerned are you about this war expanding, about a real escalation in the Middle East? Yeah, I think escalation is the, the biggest fear. You could hear it in the secretary's voice uh, saying the biggest risk is this factor. Uh, that's why he's deploying, you know, the, uh, you know, the two aircraft carriers, the destroyer ships, uh, 2,000 Marines. We've had our military bases shot at by uh, proxies of Iran now um, without a response. And I, I, I actually talked to him backstage and applauded him for putting force protection in because Hamas and Hezbollah only see one thing, and that's power. If we project power uh, and deterrence, they will back down. If we, they see weakness, they will fire. And what I worry about Hezbollah, John, is that they have 100,000 rockets and precision-guided weapons that can overload the Iron Dome. So as I we mean, look much at, more than Hamas has ever had. They're, they're the mean, A-team. It's, yeah. it's like Hamas is like Little League Baseball. And yeah. so what we worry about is, is as, um, as uh, the IDF, the Israelis, go on the ground, which is a very dangerous thing to do house by house, like we did in Iraq, uh, that that could trigger an escalation by Hezbollah. And you are working on an authorization for the use of military force. I mean, what are the prospects of America really becoming involved? I mean, we're already, the shots, first shots have been fired by the USS Kearney. Yeah, we don't want to see that. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, if we provide deterrence now, we hopefully can avoid war. Anytime you see, you demonstrate weakness, you invite aggression. So the AUMF, I've been working on to repeal 2001, 2002, uh, modernize it to the current threat. Uh, and I've been working on this even before this event yeah. happened. The discussion with the White House that I had, that I had was that the, the proxies of Iran should be included. What has changed since 9-11, right? 2001's 9-11 AMF. What has changed? It's, it's these terror proxies of Iran. And I believe they need to be added to the authorized use of military force. And now we also have the administration has got this supplemental funding request that includes Israel, Ukraine. Let, let's take a look at what's in the package. Uh, $61 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, $9 billion for humanitarian aid, $7 billion for, uh, the, for bolstering defense of, of Taiwan, $14 billion for the U.S. border. You're, you're, in, you're in favor of this package? I'm in favor of the concept of li linking the biggest threats to the free world. And that is, you know, since the fall of Afghanistan, Putin invaded, you know, uh, Ukraine. Uh, that's a threat to Europe. Chairman Xi is threatening Taiwan, the Pacific. And uh, now we have a war in the Middle East. So it links all of that, including the southwest border that I think is also a threat. Yeah. When I chaired Homeland, that all these radical elements could get into the United States. So I'm in favor of linking all of this. We're, we're looking at the numbers. Uh, the House, uh, you know, we have the power of the purse, uh, and we appropriate the money. The Ukraine piece is a little deceptive because only half of that really goes to Ukraine. The other half, the 30, 30 billion and the 60, really goes to replenishing and modernizing our uh, stockpiles, our military stockpiles. Replenish what we've already sent over to Ukraine. And modernizing our weapons yeah. and our defense industrial. So what do you say to your fellow Republicans? Say they don't want these these combined. That they think this is too much for Ukraine. Uh, it should, they shouldn't be linked. What, what, what's your answer? I think that? it'd be very dangerous to abandon our allies at this critical time. I haven't seen it more dangerous since my dad's war, World War II. Uh, when I was in Poland, they said this is like 1939. You know, and yeah. Hitler invading Poland. I saw the refugees from Ukraine coming over. Yep. You know, my guys, they just, and gals, they want more oversight, you know, they want accountability. They also want to plan path to victory and a strategic objective. And I think that's fair. Uh, and the administration has not laid that out yet. And I think that's what they want to see with Ukraine. Of course, I guess you need a Speaker of the House before you get any of this done. What, a little, uh, what the hell's going on? Uh, it's, uh, I have to say, uh, and it's my 10th term in Congress. Yeah. This is probably one of the most embarrassing uh, things I've seen because if we don't have a Speaker of the House, we can't govern. And every day it goes by, we're essentially shut down as a government. We have very important issues right now, war and peace, and we cannot deal with an aid package or my resolution condemning Hamas and supporting Israel. 
We can't. Yeah, you can't even that. pass a resolution condemning Hamas. Because so, we do, so are, are you supporting? I, I mean, I, I've lost count now. I think we're, we're pushing a, a dozen uh, candidates and potential candidates for speaker. <laughs> who, who are you supporting? I, look, I, I, I haven't decided, but I, I want a speaker in the chair so we can move forward and govern. My issues, my committee of war and peace, uh, it's too dangerous right now. The world's on fire. And this is so dangerous, what we're doing. And most importantly, it's embarrassing uh, because it empowers and emboldens our adversaries, like Chairman Xi, who says, you know, democracy doesn't is there, work. Is there any possibility of, I don't want to say coalition government, but is there any possibility that you're just going to need some kind of an arrangement that has democratic support as well? Uh, this is, uh, you know, discussed. I mean, if you can't get to 217 within our conference... Which is a really not a, not a strange hypothetical. It on seems the floor, that way. you know, how do you get there? Yeah. But I think for some, they see that as very dangerous as well. Uh, but you wouldn't rule it out if... I, you yeah. know, look, I'd rather it, it be the Republicans nominating and, and, and voting on the floor for a Republican speaker. But this can't go on forever. I don't know if we're going to have a speaker next week. I don't know how this plays out. All right, Chairman McCall, thank you for joining us.